All right, so it seems like the new trend is that every time I start recording a Bears episode, more Bears news drops. So we'll see what happens and who we get during this episode. But uh, if you haven't heard, we signed Jermaine Effetti. I believe this is how you pronounce it, from the Seattle Seahawks. He was their right tackle. Uh, he was their guard, too, at different times. Um, so, uh, as I said in the community, I'm going to just go straight to the tape. Not going to go back and forth with people on my opinion. I'll do my opinion after uh, we look at the film. Uh, I already tried this once, and it didn't go well, so I'm going to switch it up. I tried to do it where I was just looking at all the Seattle Seahawks offensive plays, and that player is just not that good. It's not as, as good as this player. So what I'm going to do is we're going to look at Russell Wilson specific plays. And then we can probably look at some run plays a little in a different video if necessary. Um, but I chose Packer Seahawks from the playoffs. It's recent. It's against a common opponent that we're going to see. So uh, with all that said, let's go ahead and get this started. So I've seen some of these plays already, but it was just a mess. So anyway, we got a play action, a uh, little zone play action boot uh, on the first play. I'm going to try not to speed through fast because I just did these, but you didn't hear me do them. So anyway, not too much, uh, just zoning down. He squares up with 95. Um and Russ has that time to throw back, so nothing too uh, too big for that play that he had to do. Uh, all right, so going to the next play, second down. Uh, this is going to be a pass play out of the shotgun. And the Fetty's on the right side, if you didn't see that. So uh, he doesn't have to do a lot in this play. What happens is Preston is going to drop into coverage. So just ends up helping with 95 on the edge. So not, not too much to do. Now, the one thing I did want to point out in the course of these differences is that not only is Russ Wilson mobile because uh, Trubisky is mobile as well, but Russ Wilson is a master in the pocket. And so that's not something <laughs> that is uniquely comparable uh, when you're talking about moving to the Bears. And neither is Foles uh, anything like uh, Russ Wilson. So on this play, uh, you got the wide nine with Preston Smith. And so what happens is the tight end engages him and the Fetty helps clean. Tight end does a decent job, but uh, Preston gets around and the Fetty's just there to help clean it up. And you're not really going to see that good of a job by our tight end, so I uh, highly doubt it. But so far, he hasn't had to do too much work. And these are not counting the pat or the run plays. So again, a play action here. Pretty good job. So we'll see the end zone view. So Packers doing a lot of shifting. You got a lot of people on the line. Actually, that wasn't even the Fetty that was blocking on the edge. The Fetty's in against 94, Lowry, I believe. And he's doing a good job. Uh, recovers, runs his feet to stay in front of him. Nice uh, pocket. I was actually looking at the edge against uh, Zadarius, but that wasn't him. So, hmm, interesting. But either way, Fetty did a good job there. So second and 10. I really don't know why it keeps clicking back. That's so annoying. So we got tight end help. Play action. We had a stunt. I'm not sure what the defensive call was. We'll see a little closer. Because no one comes to the edge. The Darius ends up pinning inside, but nobody replaces, really. 95 kind of works out that way, but doesn't fully come out there. So we'll see what happens here. So we got a tight end. So um, Amos is up in the box, but the, the threat is on the wide nine. 
Not sure if Amos blitzed or not. They switched at the last second. Yeah, Amos didn't come. So Fetty gets the edge pressure coming, then it pins back inside. And so really he should have just stayed helping with 95. Um, so yeah, they didn't really test him at all on that play. That was weird. I'm guessing somebody messed up. So anyway, first and 10. Uh, the edge player, uh, Smith is out on the receiver. And look like they had two receivers <laughs> blocking the edge. That was interesting. So let's see how that looks. Well, it was a tight end. But they bring a tight end there. But their edge is here. Looks like everybody reduces down. Because he ends up on 95. So, yeah, another zone play action. But, again, good feet to get square. I mean, he's not ahead of him, but he's not behind him either. Uh, good, that's good lateral movement to get square up with 95, though. And then he just does a good job staying on that block. So, so far, definitely doing a good job of what he's asked to do. But let's uh, keep it in context. He hasn't been... Uh, threatened by any of the real edge rushers yet. So now we got Zadarius and Preston on the same side. We'll see if they both end up coming. So Fetty, yep, he's dealing with both. Well, Preston pins inside. Now, I will say anchors well, but there's also trash on the floor. So it's not like Zadarius could really go full bore but let's see how it kind of plays out from the end zone view now you do got to be heads up though because both of their edge rushers are on your side and of course they could blitz so you got to be ready because they could have easily overset for Preston and then Zadarius would have been gone so good relation to his guard really cuts off the angle well and so now you're in a position where you both can exchange. Now, again, it's trash on the floor, so that, that has nothing to do with the Fetty. But I'm actually really impressed. Uh, that that was really uh, whoever is teaching them. That's good because, again, right now, because of this angle, if he would have – let me uh, go back a little bit. So let's let's pretend he saw Preston and he's worried about Preston. And we're thinking he's a uh, fluker, I believe, is going to get him. He could vertical set to match Preston. Now, if he vertical sets too far over sets, this is going to be not wide open, but that's now one-on-one. -on -one. And then when Preston loops inside because he's over set and Zadarius works outside, now these two can't work together because he's too far away from his guard. But what he does instead is he uh, short sets and cuts off the angle. He backs up and cuts off the angle here. So now when they exchange, the guard's there, and I'm already in place for Zadarius. So as far as the stunt goes, that was nice. Now there's trash on the floor, so I don't know how the rest of that play works out if there's no trash on the floor. But I would say that was a good angle by him. So it looks like he got an edge rusher on that one. Man, I wish we had Russ Wilson. Anybody else? <laughs> uh, so that's Preston Smith he's got. So again, short set. Not giving too much here. So now long arms. He has to anchor down. And does a pretty good job. I'm actually more impressed because... Not more impressed. I'm impressed because... Uh, I'm more shocked that Preston didn't really bull rush him. He didn't really have a lot of power, but he anchors down and he must have had a good enough core where Preston couldn't get that push on him. So that was probably one of his first true one-on-one -on -one matches with one of their edge rushers. And he does a good job. Now, Fetty does have long arms. You know, that part doesn't go away. So 
That's always going to be one of his advantages. But Massey does too. Massey has very long arms. All right, so Russ has a <laughs> Russ has all day to throw and still get sacked. Well, he didn't get sacked. He got some yards, but we'll see. Let's see from the end zone view. So we got it. Two extra uh, blockers on the edge. So if Fetty ends up zoning and reducing down to the interior, effectively becoming a guard. I don't like his hand placement at all, but he's obviously long and strong enough to hold that guy at bay. And that's 95. I'm not even sure who that is. I forgot his name. So it's, now if he was doing all this against Kenny Clark, I, I would say that's different. Now I'm not taking it away from him, just you know putting it in context. So he did a good job taking care of that. And then Russ Wilson is just scrambling around. So I want to see some more plays of him on the edge, but you see how many of these tight end sets they use. A lot of play action, a lot of zone bootlegging. So again, two tight ends, so he reduces down effectively like a guard. Now, of course, he doesn't know Russell's going that way, so the D lineman has the advantage swimming back on him um, to get off that block. But that's what happens when you're overextended. So now you're using that reach and you're relying on that reach. Now when he counters, you can't really uh, shift your weight and move with him. You got to be in balance to move with him. All right, so Russ gets sacked by Zadarius, who is, was against a Fetty. And this was a straight edge rush. No tight ends, nobody to help him. So we'll see what happens on this play. I mean, we know what happens on this play, but let's see. Russ takes forever to snap the ball. So oversets a little bit. Uses way too much extension. Hands get defeated so easily. Now, here's two problems, because this is exactly what I was talking about earlier. He's going to overset. He's going to get vertical to match Zadarius's pass rush, and he leaves his guard in no man's land. Now, really, you could still say they couldn't have been able to make this, but this leaves this wide open for whoever that linebacker is to run in there. So he's not looking at all. And they're one-on-one. -on -one, that's open. And then, of course, he just got whooped by Zadarius. But again, two plays in a row that I, we looked at, you got a problem with overreaching. All right, so third and eight. All right, so should be by himself again on the edge. Looks like Preston this time. Not sure what Preston was doing, but if Fetty does his job. Looks like Preston was supposed to do something, but just decided not to. He didn't come full off the edge. So Preston comes, slows up like he's going to pin inside, but just never does. Or right at the end he does. So... Bad pass rush, easy pickup. All right, so first and 10. So they're down 21-3. So now they're getting closer to pass mode. So we'll, we'll get a handful more of these plays and see what we can see. All right, so we got a far defender coming off the edge out of the Y9. You got Zadarius inside. And it looks like they were all pinning inside, but nobody replaced. Russ loves to take his time and see what the defense is doing. So short set here, making sure nothing comes inside. And then just catches the edge rusher. Not bad on contact. Honestly, as far as, you know, his core and being, you know, uh, sturdy against power, 
I haven't seen anybody bully him yet. Now, it's just one game, but uh, his problem has been with the overreaching. Um, but so far, when he's had contact, he hasn't been thrown off balance. And so this play kind of uh, goes into that as well. Uh, is that fact rule that's 51, something like that? Either way, he's coming off the edge, catches him with the arms. More balanced, though. But, again, he doesn't get pushed off uh, his center too much at all. So he's handling that power well. But now, again, we'll see, like, if he's doing that to Zadarius and people. Uh, so Zadarius is on the edge. No edge help. Well, kind of. And so Zadarius pins inside, and the Fetty ends up taking the interior player, which is Fackrell, or whoever 51 is. I actually don't know if that's him. So Zadarius is going to pin inside. 51 is going to come out. Good angle again. Short set. Okay, he's coming. Pass him off. In fact, rule just has no power to generate against a Fetty so far this game. So, I think uh, they, I believe, is Tom Cable still the O line coach in Seattle? But either way, they've been coached well. They use those angles pretty well. So, you like to see that on any type of blitzing team. All right, so Russ just kind of takes off. Again, you got 51 on the edge. That was nice. Nice defeat of the hands. And you can tell he's a little more patient when he's going against the 51. When it's uh, Zadarius, he gets a little more anxious. But you can tell when he has patient hands, uh, those, those long arms really help him out whenever he's in balance. All right, not sure what's happening. All right, that play didn't want to work. Whatever. So we're in the third quarter. So let's look at three more. All right, so a little play action zone again. Just reducing down. Good push on 94. All right. Not much to see there. Third and six. The money down. Got a reduced down tight end. Preston's coming from the wide nine. And really, thankfully, he was coming from the wide nine because he just whooped Ifedi. I hope I'm saying that name right. So anyway, comes from the wide nine. Longer angle. Helps out on Kenny Clark. Goes to engage. Preston gets underneath the block. Real good lean. The angle is really what saved him there. Um, but looking at it, I mean, I think part of it is that he needed to vertical set a little more. And really, this, this is probably what the Packers probably wanted to do. Because with Kenny Clark... He should have. Now, what he does is he short sets, helps make sure Kenny Clark is there, and then tries to get vertical. But the problem is Preston's angle is so good and he's so fast that he has to overwork to get to the point of attack. And by the time he gets there, he's not in balance and Preston goes underneath him. So what he really needed to do was to get vertical right away. But then that would have left Kenny Clark on a two-way go. And so really, this is the predicament as the Packers that you want to put him in so anyway he shuffles uh works back to get to that angle Preston just uses a really good lean and really that could have been a hold all 
There's no way that's it. Oh, okay. We'll stop there because the other ones didn't load. Uh, I was like, there's no way I went through 44 plays already. But we'll stop there. We've been talking for a while. Um, so, yeah, that that's a little preview. Um, I'll most likely do some run plays. Not today. Probably do it tomorrow. Uh, here's what I'll say. Um, very candid. I mean, it's all out there to be seen because I'm at the point where I evaluated a lot of people. So I evaluated Fetty coming out of Texas A&M was not a fan. A lot of people was a big fan. Uh, A lot of first round talk. Obviously he went at the end of the first round, um, lower than where some people had him. Um, but I was not a fan. And he didn't translate all that well. So people will say he started. He started. Remember, Seattle's had one of the worst (laughs) O-lines in a long time. Or they've had one for a long time. You know, Russell Wilson's whole career, they never had like a top-tier O-line. And so that was one of the criticisms people always talked about, even when, you know, they had the Legion of Boom. And a lot of people was like, you know, they had to put a lot of money into them and not necessarily on the offensive weapons. And that's why you had like um, right now it's a Tyler Lockett. But before Doug Baldwin, um, what is his name? Uh, Golden Tate, who wasn't a big round pick. Um, you had a lot of those guys had to really break out. That's who the Seattle Seahawks were. They were doing a lot with a little. And so, yes, he started. Um, but he wasn't great at tackle. He led the league in uh, penalties, um, I believe, his first full season. Um, yeah, and, and much like that in college. Notorious holder, um, not super physical, big, and can move, but just really bad technique. Now, of course, it's been years. People grow. They grow up, so that's why I watched the tape. I was watching right along with you. Um, definitely better. And that's not like a given. Some players don't get better. <laughs> and so he's definitely improved and his help, you know, being in a winning organization, being around some good coaching, but, um, some natural tools. Like I say, he's long. Um, he showed really good anchor. I can't remember off the top of my head if I didn't think he was strong or not. But um, he definitely looks strong right now, even though we didn't see a bunch of uh, plays against power rushers. Uh, But he seems to have good balance and core um, and good lateral movement. I mean, they're a heavy, heavy zone team. He has good lateral movement. Now, um, all that being said, there's a reason he's just got signed. There's a reason it's a one year deal. There's a reason he didn't sign back with the Seattle Seahawks. Um, so there's some people and maybe they're just that, that as bears fans, that's the only way they can process things. But there's some people jumping up for joy, huge signing. We got a big one. Like, no, (laughs) if he was that big of a a talent, Seattle would have signed him. And if Seattle didn't sign him, somebody else would have signed him. And if somebody else didn't sign him, we wouldn't have signed him for one year. So obviously not a premium talent. So let's not go crazy. Um, is he better than Massey? I don't know. You got to look at the context again. Vastly different from what we did as an offense. And so it will be interesting to see um, what, because again, I've talked about this. James Daniels came from a uh, Iowa college team that uh does power run pretty well, but they zone a lot too. And well, he was asked to zone, like he reached a lot, I should say. They didn't zone, they zone, but it wasn't a lot. He reached a lot. So, power plays, he had to reach the technique, uh, one tech or the nose. And so, he did that a lot. A lot of lateral movement. Uh, Cody Whitehair, a uh, good player. Not powerful like uh, uh, Kyle Long or anything. Uh, Massey, best attribute is his mobility. Uh, Not Massey, Leno. Leno's best attribute is his mobility. And so now you add Ifedi, and I continue to say, okay, if we're not going to be built for power, then our schemes need to match that. And so whether we're running split zone a lot, inside zone, whatever, 
it'll be interesting to see if that's what we're moving more towards so that we can do the play action um, and, you know, the bootlegs. And so that'll be one question. If it's not and we're trying to do some of the same stuff we did last year, then it's going to be a real question mark because the Fetty just he didn't have to do that. On top of that, he doesn't have Russ Wilson. <laughs> Uh, we saw, I mean, the schemes really helped him out, I think, at least in that game. The schemes really kept him into where he had to be uh, when he had to go one-on-one. I don't think he's elite, but I think if you're talking about versus Massey, definitely an upgrade. Um, but then that's the other question. Is he a right guard? Is he a right tackle? Uh, the philosophy has been to cross-train everybody. And I guarantee you, I don't think they have an answer right now. I think they're definitely going to go into the offseason or to the uh, preseason and say, okay, everybody's spots open. Best five are going to play, and we'll figure out where. I don't think they're just going to plug the pieces in right now. Um, So they got a guy, as I said, and I didn't find the stats, but uh, Fetty definitely played guard. I know that for a fact. So you got a guy that plays seasons at guard, plays seasons at tackle. Um, as I said, I think Massey would be better served as a right guard. Now, I hope this isn't it. I hope they don't say, okay, um, Leno Whitehair Daniels left side, Massey and the Fetty right side, either Massey at tackle, a Fetty at guard, or flipped. I hope that's not the that's what we're doing, but we'll see. Um, so again, I never was a fan of him coming out. Didn't do super great in Seattle, to be honest, um, to start out. Became a little bit more steady um, towards the end and definitely looks like a professional tackle right now. But at the end of the day, um, I'm not really excited about the uh, pick or about the pick, about the signing. So uh, that's not me just hating. We watched the tape as well we'll look at some more tape um yeah yeah i I, there's other avenues i would have went is what i'll say so anyway go to comment section let me know what you think about the signing share it around get the conversation started thumbs up subscribe stay safe stay healthy and stay up and bear down